Hello, everyone, and welcome. We want to give you a few moments to get into today's event. So as you're coming in, thank you. We're so thrilled that you're choosing to invest an hour to be learning with us. And what I'd love to do is draw your attention to the chat. You'll find the chat at the bottom of your Zoom panel. And please take a look and make sure you've selected everyone so that as you type in the chat, everyone will see your comments and questions. We want today to be highly interactive. And so we invite you right now to test out the chat by saying hello. Tell us where you're calling in from today. Um, if you happen to be calling in as part of professional development and you are representing an organization, go ahead and tell us what organization you're representing so we can give you a shout out. Uh, welcome to Lori in Dayton, Ohio from Kroger. That's one of my very favorite places, Lori, um, especially because there's a Starbucks inside. It's National Coffee Day. It's on my mind. So hi, Kate in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hi, Nancy in Woodland, California. Hello in Sacramento. Yes, National Coffee Day. Um, hello. Um, looks like we have someone from Sightline and Pharma Intelligence. Deborah's here from outside Washington, D.C. It must be evening where Dr. Coco U is, wherever it's evening. And hi from Anne in London, who's working in the public sector. Thanks for those of you who are taking a moment to let us know where you are. And hi, Vicki in California. Um, we are going to get started in just a few moments. Oh, wow. Here's a, Sandra from Atlanta Emory Healthcare. A lot of California people. If you guys don't know, I'm going to introduce Andrea in just a second, but she is in California in the Bay Area, right? Yes. And I am in my office in Michigan. Go blue. I never miss an opportunity to say go blue when I say that I'm from Michigan. If you can humor me. Sometimes people get in a fight with me in the chat about, uh, you know, how their schools are better. It's okay. We love everyone. We want to create an inclusive community where everyone can learn and grow together. So as we get started, really briefly, uh, for those of you who haven't been a part of our webinars before, I want to let you know who I am. I don't usually do this. I'm Becky Robinson. I'm the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence. We are a digital marketing agency, and we support amazing authors and thought leaders in creating greater reach for their ideas. So this webinar is part of a series of webinars that we do throughout the year, and we would love for you to become a part of more of them. And today we are thrilled uh, beyond belief to be supporting Andrea Mind DeWitt and her new book, Name, Claim, and Reframe, Your Path to a Well-Lived Life will be launching November 29th. So to tell you a little bit about Andrea, you have not gotten to experience it yet, but Andrea is known for this amazing infectious energy, and she spent decades as an educator. She has a master's in education in reading leadership from UC Berkeley, and she's also a certified professional coach through the Coactive Training Institute and the International Coaching Federation. And I love that uh, Andrea's skill in coaching shows up in every single conversation, and I know that you're going to get a taste of that today. Um, also, Andrea has two amazing kids and a beautiful dog, and her dog happens to share the name of my youngest daughter. We've, when my daughter was little, Andrea, we didn't talk about this. I called her um, Maggie May. Uh, May is her middle name, and your dog, your Labrador, is called Maggie May. So this is why we love each other so much. I love this. All right, so we're we're ready to dive in. I think that Wendy put the full bio into the chat for those of you who want to read more and learn more. And later in the event today, um, we'll give you a chance to find out how you can stay in touch with Andrea. So thank you so much for investing this time learning with us. And let's dive in. Okay. All right. Should I share my screen? Is that yes? That yeah. Is? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's let's go. Let's let's go. Let's go. I'm so excited to be here and to talk to you today. First of all, thank you all for being here. I'm so excited to share this content and to dance with you in this. Um, my hope is that I can gift you some insights and some thinking that maybe you hadn't you know, thought about before. So that's my hope. 
um, some some interesting things I'm going to talk about. So we're going to start with my book cover, which I I'm sorry, I'm like the the really obnoxious mother that is can't say look at my child how cute it is, but I mean I think this book cover is gorgeous, but it's so much more than a book cover. It is magic, and I want to share with you the overarching message of my book before I go into just one part of it. Name, claim, and reframe, and I've trademarked the system, is an invitation to align with your divine feminine ingenuity by releasing from the age-old belief that the strongest need to show up as warring, warring warriors to succeed. This really, this work comes from my heart because it's, it's work that I've done myself. And I thought it was so amazing that I thought, you know what, I can make a system that I can use with my clients. And this is how it works. Name the source of your pain point, your triggers, your limiting beliefs, and your core wounds. When we understand what holds, what is holding us back from our dreams, our hopes, our goals, we can get to the other side of it and take action. The claiming step is claiming resonant actions that align with your core values. When you know what your core values are, it's much easier to gain clarity on where you want to go, as well as keep sacred what's most important. And my experience is that we don't really know what our core values are until we have a dissonant experience that knocks us to our knees. And so I do a lot of work with my clients with core values, and there's a lot of work in this book about core values so you can get clear on it. The final step is the reframe, which is reframing your thinking so you can proceed with strategic and visionary optimism. And what I mean by that is you're going to be separating your ego from the triggering event, the event that you can't be with or the frustration or the challenge. And when we are, we've separate our ego, we can look at the big picture and really be a lot more thoughtful and resourceful in our actions as we go forward. You cannot claim or reframe until you've named. So today we're going to dive into the name, the naming step. And I'm going to, I'm using an, I, because I'm a teacher, I'm at heart, I use a lot of visuals. So, and it's, and like me, it's, it's activated. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be using a lot of that. I think there's always vocabulary and jargon that we use in certain fields. And I'm going to be using the word energy, which is something that we use a lot in, in life coaching. And I want to give you a context for what I'm talking about with energy. Energy is your special sauce or the unique essence and the gifts and talents that you radiate out into the world. We all at birth are given gifts and it's important for you to really own those gifts, but not keep them for yourselves. Your job is to share them with the world. And as a coach, what I try to do with my clients is have them really get in touch with what those hidden gifts are. And sometimes we don't claim our hidden gifts. And so today we're going to be dancing a little bit in that. And this is where the truth part comes in for you being honest with yourself. I'm going to ask you two different prompts. The first one will be hopefully easy for you. And if you're willing to share what your what what you're thinking, I invite you to share it in the, in the chat. Here's the first one. What gifts do you think others see in you? What are they? What are the things that you do well, that you share with the world? What are they? And I'm going to shout those out. Please so do. if you would go ahead and go to the chat, use the everyone uh, from the drop down menu and tell us what gifts others see in you. Keith says kindness. Sheila says my compassion. Shell says writing. Um, good listener, inclusiveness, caring, willingness to share and show up for others, faith and belief, organizer, empathy, calming presence, energy, encour encourager, leader, I love hearing those. Um, leadership, caring, listener, energy, passion. Good listener, smart, thoughtful, caring. Ooh. Oh, wow. Here's a whole bunch. Insight, caring, inclusivity, ability to hold conflicting ideas at the same time. Kindness, caring, empathy, good listener, person who wants others to succeed. Connecting, loving, listener, kind, intentional. 
Ooh, empathy, awesome. kindness. Wow, oh, we have a lot of kind so and empathetic <laughs> people on this call. I love it. Funny. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing those. I mean, it's it, and it's and it's kind of cool to be able to write to actually when you share it out publicly. I mean, that's that's kind of scary to do that. And thank you for sharing it, because also when you share it, it means that you believe it. So thank you for sharing that. The next prompt is a little trickier. And I'm going to give you a little context for it so that you understand what I'm talking about. What parts of your unique essence are you more reluctant to share with the world? Now, I'm going to give you a little context for this. Um, one of the things that I was reluctant to share with the world is I was a struggling reader as a child. I took, it took me a long time to learn to read. And I had this, this limiting belief that I was not scholarly, that I was Dumb. And I read a whole story about this in my book, but so I carried that around with me, not telling anyone, but overachieving my whole life. In fact, I overachieved so much that I, I earned a master's in le reading leadership because I had to prove to myself that I could read. <laughs> so we all have um, things that hold us back. And sometimes we're not honest. When I talk in my title, I talk about your truth hold you back from your power and your potential. And this is where I go with my clients and where I will go with you in my book to be honest with yourself about the things that might hold you back, the limiting beliefs, possibly core wounds and things that maybe you don't, you're reluctant to share with the world. If you are brave, you may share them, but you don't have to. Anybody brave? I would share? love to see. So um, here's an answer. Vulnerability, knowledge limits, lack of higher degree and age. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Worthy of celebrity. I'm not sure what that means, but that's interesting. Sharing insights I see and no one else does. I'm good at math and analytics, also age. Oh. I Boy, just, that's a hard one for women, isn't it? Andrea? It is. And, you know, as you were sharing this, I was getting chills because I was thinking, you know, these people are sharing from their hearts. So thank you. Um, I have a couple more, if you oh, don't yes, mind. Please. Um, so Liesl says that I'm strong and highly intuitive. Age, for sure, again, and anxiety. Vulnerability, age, not being enough. Um, imposter syndrome. It's. It seems like there's a lot of resonance here with the age comment. Yes. Um, Sandra says uh, she's an empath. She doesn't want to share that with the world. Yeah. Um, strong intuition and evaluation of people's character. Yes, on imposter syndrome. Here's another one on imposter syndrome. Oh my goodness. People, thank you so much. I mean, this is, oh, I could, we're getting, okay, this is going to be fun. Okay, so here we go. So I'm, I, I want you to keep that in mind because I'm going to, share some more and you'll have a chance to dive into this even more. I love this illustration. I wish I could tell you who the illustrator is or the, the artist. I don't know. I can't find it again. But when I saw this, I thought, oh my gosh, this just resonated with me so much because the people that come to work with me are, feel this way. They are armed up. They are, they, they are, they think they need to fight a battle but they're really not grounded. They don't feel grounded. And this work, as I said to you, really resonated with me. And I do identify with the, the warrior architect because I'm a warrior in recovery, which means that I'm still a warrior and I have to battle all the time to not be a warrior. And I mean, my default is to grab that sword and shield and just go. And I have, and this work has really taught me to slow down and think about what's going on under the armor. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I talked about core wounds and limiting beliefs, and it all comes from kind of our, our background and where we grow up, right? So my family, I have the most incredible, I love my family. They're incredible. My, my father, um, who is turning 93 on Sunday, is still alive. And he is, a, I call him a superhero because he's amazing, but he's was a very masculine man, very powerful. And our house was a very masculine household. I have two younger brothers. And so my father valued courage, athleticism, and steel equipment. And he did, you know, 
emotions we're not really tolerant you need to stuff that down and figure that figure things out just keep it down keep it low so it's not surprising that as i grew up i showed up in this way courageous determined target focused and responsible oh wonderful qualities we would not be embarrassed to put those into the chat box great qualities for a leader a friend a partner however this is where I got curious because when I was triggered, exhausted, not at my best, this is what showed up. Controlling, defensive, stubborn, and territorial. That's when I'm too much into my masculine. And when I look at that woman's face, you see that she's conflicted. She's got regrets. And when we're not, we know when we've gone below the line that we're not at our best. And so this is why I'm inviting you to think about what might be under the armor. Because I'm saying like our masculine is the armor part, but what's underneath the, the side? Now, my mom, who is also, she's here with us today. She's 88 and still plays golf. Amazing mom, hit all the marks. I mean, I can't, I mean, I, she's amazing and had an incredible childhood. However, my mother was also a lot in her masculine. I think that parenting requires a lot of masculine energy. When I did see feminine energy from my mom, this is what I saw. Perfectionism, insecurity, people pleasing, because she took care of everybody but herself, and withholding, withholding her light, holding it in. And I'm gonna stand right with my dear mother and say that, I have all of those qualities and, and many more what you're going to have a chance to see this. And I, you know, I think about this and I think for women, we can see this, that we withhold our light. We think we don't want to take up too much space. We want to please everyone. And I think that I think from my experience of working with clients, that this is something that is familiar to a lot of women and men too. So when I, as I grew up, I thought, you know what? I got the feminine over here. I got the masculine. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to lean more towards that, that above the line masculine. But you notice we're missing something. Aren't you kind of curious about what's underneath that? That's the part that's under our armor. That's the stuff that we don't show as much. And so when I was grounded and at my best, this is the stuff that I was able to share, which I didn't lead with as much the collaborative, emotional, intelligent, receptive, and vulnerable parts of me, which make me, you know, a, a much better person. Right now, I'm really leaning into vulnerability because I'm sharing this, my shadow self with you. Now, I want to invite you to look at that left side and the right side. And if you think about putting those together into a leader, wow, somebody that has awareness and is balanced on both sides, that packs a, a potent punch. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So before I go any further, I need to be really clear about this. I work with both men and women, and I see the du dualities of masculine and feminine energies as non-binary entities that all humans hold, regardless of their gender identities. And I think that it's important to think about this. When we think about negotiating, negotiation, if you're a good negotiator, you bring a lot of feminine energy into that. And so, and I've seen both men and women be an amazing negotiator. So I wanna be clear about that this is non-binary. Our natural masculine and feminine traits are essential to the balance of our wholeness and they create the symmetry, the stability, and the harmony of the, which is the subtitle of my book of a well lived life. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. There's no such thing as perfect. But a well lived life means that you are in touch with where you are, who you are, how you're feeling, and what you need at any given moment. It's about making a choice to choose again. And you always have that choice. So, Oops, and I'm gonna just move this over here. So are you above the line or are you below the line? I did not coin this phrase, um, but when I learned of it through a mentor, her name is Abigail Prout, and she is the leader of Spiral Leadership. I, I quote her in my book. 
But Abigail turned me on to this and she and I have both been inspired by the work of Conscious Leadership. And this is their book. But I'm gonna give you a quote and then I'm gonna dive into this, this chart. We suggest that the first mark of conscious leaders is self-awareness and the ability to tell themselves the truth. It matters far more that leaders can accurately determine whether they are above the line or below the line in any given moment than where they actually are. So in other words, you may be triggered to go below the line. However, you always have the choice to say, oops, I was triggered. I'm going to go bring myself back up above the line. Of course, because I'm a teacher, I have to always have visuals because I want to make sure all learners can see what I'm talking about. So I made a visual. This is the balance your response chart. You will find it in my book. Um, we're going to be dancing in this a little bit more today, so you'll have a chance to play with it. You'll see on the very top, I have the natural masculine and feminine traits, and I just plug mine in there. The things that when we're at our best, our very best. Now we see that orange line, we want to be above the line, and then the subterranean area below the line, which I call the wounded response when we're not at our best. And I plugged mine in there. And when we look at this and this chart, and I use it all the time, I use this, this tool for myself and my clients constantly. And it really keeps me honest with myself. When we think about this, it's really the difference between reacting to challenges, frustrations, and adversity and responding to it. Do you want to react or do you want to respond? And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we go further, I need to give you a little bit more context. I love this, this graphic uh, because it talks about left and right brain. And of course, I am a reading specialist first and reading is a very left brain task. And the reason that I struggled as a child with reading is because I had a blockage between my left and right brain. And so I've always been really interested in how the left brain and the right brain integrate. Well, masculine and feminine energy has a similar, similar sort of structure to it. When we think about masculine energy, it's really more about doing. Assertive, decisive, logical, protective, competitive, determined, structured, and target focused. It's about keeping those troops in line. You're a team leader. You are using a lot of masculine energy to make sure everybody knows what they're supposed to do. You're taking care of people, making sure that everything's where it needs to be. I talked about my mom and I think she is so like, I always thought she was like the best general. She kept us all in line. And I think that this is important. This is so important in a leader, in a person, in a partner, in a friend, in a parent. But here's where we really need to bring in more balance because feminine energy is more about being intuitive. Someone said, I'm, I'm an intuitive. Yes, bring that out. That's so important. Cooperative, receptive, empathetic, collaborative, patient, versatile. When we are in our feminine energy, we are checking out the scene. We're taking it in. We're looking around. It's, we're really more thinking about what's under my armor, what am I feeling in this moment? And we're also really attentive to the other people in our environment. And that's where the magic happens. And that's why this work just absolutely intrigued me. And I thought, we've got to look closer at this. So now it's your turn. I invite you to take a little piece of paper and make yourself a little quadrant. So you have natural, your natural masculine energy and your natural feminine and your wounded and your wounded masculine and wounded feminine. And just play with me for a minute. Before I move into this, and I, again, I worry because it's a, it's a lot of visual um, because I'm worried, I think I'm going to overwhelm you, but, but you'll get a chance to screenshot this. And I, 
I invite you just to ponder it later when you have time to chew on it. But this is everywhere. This is not anything that I, I came up with. This, this graphic you'll find, and there's all different curations of it. This is mine. Um, in fact, I think this one's a little even different than the one in my book. Um, I'm always changing it up because I'm always thinking about what's showing up for me. So let's play a little bit together. And I'm going to put up each different part and I'm going to have you, let's start with the first one, which is our natural masculine energies. What are two, three, or four of those that you think you embody that you'd like, or you'd like to embody? And if you'd like to please share it in the chat, Becky, would you help us to see what people are sharing? I think um, one of these that I love is is ownership. That's a that's a wonderful one. I was trying to write mine down also, Andrea. I held up my notebook. I don't know if you saw. I wrote down action oriented. Uh, here's someone says committed, problem solver, uh, balanced, efficient, logical, questioning, integrity, mentor, trustworthy, another trustworthy, um, problem solver, action oriented, efficient embody action oriented protector committed want to embody decisive uh, problem solver structured oh yeah all that sounds incredible mm -hmm. i mean you think deliberate about inner strength efficient magnetic that one resonates with me uh, de decisive uh, protector honorable confident task oriented problem solver Ooh, so, ma so many good ones. So many good ones. And we all think, ooh, just Decisive. saying some of those things kind of makes you sit up straighter, doesn't it? <laughs> See possibilities, integrity. Yeah. I think, I think we want them all. We do, yeah. don't we? And we can get determined. We can we can have them all. We can have them all. So now I'm gonna we're going to go below the line. And this is where I'm going to say to you that you do not need to share unless you want to. But this is where I talk about the truth. <laughs> it's really being honest with yourself. For those wounded places, where do you go when maybe you're, you're not? And I apologize that that is covering. Oh, we can see it. Can you see it? Okay. Um, I, I find, you know, some people tend to go more wounded feminine and wounded or a wounded masculine. Um, I see a couple you, defensive and I, I resonate with that one. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Um, of several defensive. I have one controlling. I'm not going to say people's names. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want to feel sacred. Yeah. Aggressive, sharp tone, um, defensive. Uh, need to be right, disconnected, closed-minded, negative outlook, mm -hmm. territorial, frustrated, control, blame or shame. I was going to bring up blame or shame. That one shows up for me so much. <sighs> Selfish, non-collaborative, controlling, intimidating, uh, defensive, inflexible, territorial, closed-minded, Wow. I Patronizing. mean, I want you to notice something. Can you see how the energy has changed in this, in this space that we're in this virtual space? It's gotten heavy. Hmm. I mean, I feel it because it's like, that's heavy stuff. <laughs> when that happens to us, we think, Oh God, that doesn't feel good. I don't like that. I'm behaving that way. Or you, or you have a reactive response when you think, gosh, it just doesn't feel good. Yeah, I could feel myself leaning away from the screen. I know, I know, I know it. And it's, and I look at these and when I really was honest with myself about this, and um, I'm excited for you when we get through the other side to screenshot it, because um, you'll be able to dance in this a little bit as we go on. Okay, should we go back above the line, please? We need to lift the energy. Yes. Let, please, please. Okay, so let's go over to our natural feminine. Oh, those are kind of handy, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So, so pick a few. Yes, pick a few. I'm going to um, 
br mention um, Grace. My favorite. I one. love that one. Authentic. Gratitude. There's a few from me. I see uh, accountability, generosity, inclusivity, caring, giving of self, loving, listener, gentle, nurturing, and caring, kind, caring, grateful, empathetic, cheerleading. You know, I want to notice that you asked us to tell our strengths at the beginning of the call, and many of the strengths that came up at the beginning of the call are, are coming into this natural feminine energy. Uh, resourceful, developer, listener, humble, and gratitude, authentic, inspire, motivate, gentle, empowering, kind, cheerleading, empowering, emotional intelligence, intuitive, listener, inspire, open-minded, Oh my goodness. Thank you I mean, for sharing. Gratitude, authentic, generosity, commitment, devoted, humor, nurturing, Becky, I, loving, I, gratitude. I want to thank you because I noticed when people were sharing their, you know, that after, after that first prompt, I noticed the same thing. And I'm so glad that you brought that up um, because I think that it's important for us to remember that both sides of our wholeness are so important. And oftentimes, um, I have found, and I'm going to go into the wounded in a minute, but with my um, feminine clients, female clients, oftentimes they're really afraid to show those empathetic, that, that um, emotional intelligence to, at work, because they're afraid that people are going to see, you know, they, they can see things that maybe others can't see. And it's what I would say is those are the leaders that we are going to want to follow. So um, this is just, you know, bringing it out for you to think about. Okay. So we do have to go below the line. Aren't you curious uh, what's under th in that wounded spot? This is this I am. the hardest, the hardest one, I think for me. And some of those are the ones that showed up on your charts. Yes. Yes. So if people would like to share these, I think someone earlier was looking for that idea of withholding on the masculine side. It looks like it shows up on the feminine side, seeking validation, uh, negative self-talk, burnout, overwhelmed, withholding. Yeah. Uh, avoidance, perfectionist, negative self-talk, overwhelmed, avoidance with lots of exclamation points, negative self-talk. <laughs> A risk averse, overwhelmed, complaining, self pity, oversensitive, compare, despair, passive yeah. aggressive, perfectionist, oversensitive, reactive, insecure, withholding. Oh, all of it. And it just, all ew, of it. Mm -hmm. ew. I will tell you this because I want to share this with you because I, 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 I hope, even if you decide not to buy my book, which I, I hope you do, but this chart this and i shared it with with colleagues and friends and people go i can't stop thinking about it and my daughter and i talk about this and i once i started doing this work i stopped being i stopped i really checked in on not comparing and despairing and i really stopped my gossiping i would i may think it and i'll think andrea why why do you need to say that you know, what about this is, what about that, about that is threatening you to go there? That's just nasty. Bring it up. And it's just this personal check-in that I have with myself. And I just love that dance. And I just made me a, a nicer person, I think. So, um, and we can all be nicer, as my mother says, you know, you always need to be nicer. So um, this is just, please take a screenshot of it and look at it. And um, you'll have the recording too. And of course, it's in my book. So because, and I want to have time for questions, I'm going to give you, because I, of course, I'm a teacher and I have to sum everything up. Oopsie, excuse me. To name is to investigate the source of your triggered emotion. It means that you're taking a beat to notice what's going on underneath the armor. Whoops. It's like, what is causing me to dip below the line? What is it? What's bothering me? What can't I be with about this particular situation? And what are the triggers, the core wounds, and the living beliefs that are keeping me from accessing the best parts of my wholeness 
or what I would say is your power and your potential. That's what it is. That's the secret. That's the key right there. And so Becky, I'm going to stop sharing because I think we're going to go to questions, correct? We are, but could I ask you a favor? Could we yes. go back to the chart? I, yes. I think there's a couple of people who want to see that chart again. Yes. Including me. If people saw me hold my phone up, I was going to take a picture of it. Yes. Um, please, please, please. And I also want to say to you out there that this is my, I mean, I, I, I want to say that please play with this. You may not agree with all of how I've curated this. Someone mentioned withholding. And when I think of the definition of withholding, I think of when I withhold my light, I make myself smaller. I think I'm taking up too much space, which I think is oftentimes what happens, especially with women is um, I notice sometimes I try to talk faster because I don't think there's space enough for me to finish my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've really tried to work on myself and with my clients, like stand your ground, you are worthy to speak and your ideas matter. Mm -hmm. And so that is so powerful. Yeah. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, just show us the next slide one more time before um, you stop sharing. And we are um, going to go to questions. And okay. as we're waiting, oh, I stopped. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Hold on. You're, you're okay. I'm okay. Um, I know I'm okay. There I am. Let me go back. Excuse me. Yeah, just show us the, I think <laughs> the, the, the one after this, this one. Yes, please. There we go. See, I'm showing right. my, my, my un, untechy side. You're doing just great. So while we're waiting for some questions, I jotted one down when you were speaking earlier, Andrea, you mentioned that there's a lot in the book about core values and also that you do a lot of core values work with your clients. And when you said that, I was really curious about whether or not you see a difference between, you know, the, the values that an organization might put forward as their core values and the core values that you might just have personally. And how do you help your clients navigate that? That's such a great question. And I think that the most important thing is, and when I work with a client, the most important thing that I would suggest for anybody looking for their values is to get clear on what your values are first. <laughs> because you really can't honor an organization's core values unless you actually will want to own those. I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't work for someone that if, if one of their values trumps on one of your values. And so I think that there's this really this connectedness to core values. And so that's why it's important to get clear with what they are. I mean, I think, you know, when something has trumped a core value because you feel it physically. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, when you believe in something, it feels good. Following your core values feel good, feels good. When you're not honoring your core values. It doesn't feel good. Um, I have a whole little um, assessment in my book about core values, and I think it's powerful to go through. Yeah. That's helpful. So how many do you recommend that people identify? I don't think there's a number, Becky. No, I, I think that, I mean, I, I just, I have a list that I've offered people and I don't think it's complete. I just don't think it's complete. And I give you a list that you can look at. Um, I, I can't answer that for you or anyone on this call. Um, I think it has to really come, it's a personal thing. And um, I, what I do do is I ask someone, you know, when was the last time that you felt like you were, you could com be completely yourself and you were completely accepted? Because if in that moment you're honoring your core values and what are they in that moment? I mean, it's, it's different from everybody else. Sure. Well, so I have a question here from Katie and thanks to those who are saying in the chat that you've ordered the book. We appreciate your support. Um, and hopefully once you get the book, you'll read it and leave an Amazon review. Uh, so Katie says, super excited to get the book. Can you say a little more on how to reframe once you are aware and have named and claimed a below the line trait? Oh, I love that. Well, reframing is, I mean, I, I don't want to undermine reframe because I go through a big thing on name and a big thing on claim. And then reframing is really taking ownership of 
where you are in that moment. So it's like, and I talk a lot about, um, I mean, it's never about when, when you have a situation that's triggering to you, we, we get our egos involved, right? And the big thing I think about reframing is you've separated your ego and you thought, you know what, that person wasn't nice to me. And that's not about me. That's about their stuff. So what can I do to honor my values and what action might I take? I talk a lot about in reframing about <laughs> navigating feedback and criticism, because I think we get really stuck and hooked with our limiting beliefs in that. And reframing is really about um, staying in your own lane, honoring yourself, giving yourself space to process what's really going on, what the facts are, taking owner for ownership for your part of it, and then letting the rest go. And I think when we do that, we're able to see what's the best thing for us to do. That's helpful. Thank you so much, Andrea. And uh, Katie says she's nodding as you're speaking and it's so good to honor yourself and have accountability and let go. So um, Andrea, I was hoping that you could talk to us about um, the term that you use in the book of gentle warrior. I always have trouble with that word war warrior to describe your own desire to disarm from masculine energy so that you could embrace a more feminine approach to life. So what does it mean to you to be a gentle warrior? Well, thank you for asking me that question. Um, I open the book with this image of this incredibly empowered woman. And actually she's a real person. She is a mentor. Her name's Linda. And she was a gentle warrior. She led with um, just generosity, but she was just so incredibly um, gifted in being, taking up space, but in a very altruistic way. And I think that a gentle warrior is really in touch with who she is at the core. She isn't afraid to speak her mind, but she's, as we talked about that chart, she's taken time to think about what would be the best way for me to respond to this challenge than react to it. And sometimes we need to check our ego at the door. Sometimes it's not about us. And a gentle warrior is um, resourceful. She's um, intelligent. Um, the best, I think the best leaders have that incredible balance between their masculine and feminine. And that is a gentle warrior to me. And gentle warriors are not all women. <laughs> they are men too. We've all had incredible mentors that you've watched and you'd say, wow, I can't believe how they navigated that. Um, I have days when I am a gentle warrior and I have days when I'm not. And I want to say to you that it's a practice. And I hope that looking at that chart can help you just begin your journey um, because you, it all starts with naming because you can't get to claim or reframe until you've named and you know where you are in your arms with yourself. That is so helpful. So um, if I remember right, you have a different term that you used for yourself before you became the gentle warrior. Is that something you're willing to share? Let's see. What, what you mean the um, oh the warring warrior? Yes. Oh, yeah. will you tell us about the warring warrior? Oh gosh. Well, I mean, I was a warring warrior, my friends, for fifty some odd years. I mean, and man, she got stuff done. But she had that, you know, the expression on that <laughs> illustration. She had that expression. <sighs> A lot. And I think that I've met a lot of warring warriors out there and they get things done, but I, I think that there's a softer way through. And my book is really about um, giving people another option to choose again, you know, to choose again, you can choose again. And there's, and I think that when we lead in a softer way, we get closer to our authentic self and we live happier lives and we have better relationships and um, we're just happier. It's a well-lived mm -hmm. life. So let's talk a little bit more about this decision that we can make when we're triggered to react to responding instead of reacting. What advice do you have if you're really in the heat of the moment and it feels like the only choice you have is to react? What can you oh, do um, to respond instead? Well, the first thing is take a breath, for goodness sake. <laughs> I 
I mean, I think that, I mean, we, I mean, especially, I mean, I speak to you with my heart in my hand because I, I mean, my first, I want to just grab that sword right away. And that's just not the best way to be. So it's more about, okay, if, if you think about being, taking a feminine side, we would take a breath, take it in and take a beat to think about, okay, this is happening. What? would be what would be the best way for me to respond because right there you've given yourself a chance to realize ooh that hurt <laughs> or i don't like that right there you you have awareness that you've been triggered and then you have the option to to choose again and i want to say also and i was going to add this to and I, I don't think i don't think i did but um, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen um, you always have the choice to if you do react to take ownership, which, which is an uh, above my masculine trait to say, you know what, that was a mistake. I'm so sorry that I reacted in that way. My mistake. Could I, could you give me another chance or could I try this again? Um, and uh, my, my sincere apologies. I think that an apology is, um, I mean, I don't think enough people know how to apologize gracefully. That's grace. Um, and gosh, I want to follow the person that's able to apologize. Hmm. So hopefully that gives, I, I've answered your question, Becky. Yeah, that's, that's a super helpful answer. And obviously the chance to take a deep breath before responding is a helpful break and to ask for a redo. To ask for a redo. I mean, you could always ask for a redo and be prepared because for people to say no, hmm. <laughs> but that's their stuff. I mean, just so you're honest in, and in your integrity with yourself, I think you're good to go. You're good to go. So we have some fans of yours, Andrea, who, who are curious about if this book will be available as an audio book, <gasps> uh, because Susan says she ordered the book, but would love to hear your voice so she can feel oh. the energy. And dear Susan, um, thank you, Susan, who is, is a dear, dear friend and colleague of mine. Um, I hope so, Susan. And all of you say do prayers for me. I'm 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 rooting for an audiobook. I keep telling my publisher, this book's gonna sell. So we're gonna be having an audio gentleman. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I think um I think that there's energy in when authors, I know um, when you hear authors read their their work, I think that there's a certain energy that's translated. And not everybody can come to my workshops or my talks. So I hope so. I'm I'm crossing my fingers. Well, I'm going to recommend that, that we should get you to read the intro only and record it. And maybe we could send it out to this group so that they oh. could hear an introduction oh. to the book. It doesn't have to be a formal audio book. We can just I kind of roar a little bit. I kind of roar in, in the intro. So yes, that would, that would be kind of fun. Wouldn't it? And I, I highly recommend the experience of reading your own book. I had the opportunity to narrate my own book and it was so fun. I mean, it's tiring, of course, but it was really, really fun. Well, and, it, and I think that it's also experiencing it. I mean, for the reader too, it's just getting um, the intonation when you read it because you know how you, you wrote it. Um, so mm. I, I think that would be really fun. Well, and we have lots of support for the idea of an audiobook in the chat. And write to my publisher and tell them, please. <laughs> da Dana says your energy is infectious and will translate so well to an audible. And Vicki says, what an absolute treat to be here today. I agree. You know, it's so astounding to hear people really own their own vulnerabilities and own the shadow side. Um, Susan says, send us your publisher's info and we're all going to write. It's going to be like one of those campaigns where people are writing to their senators only everyone's going to be writing to Andrea's publisher. My publisher is Hatherly Press. Hatherly Press. So you can just write, you know, write them and let them know. Um, or, you know, even, you know, when you, when the book comes out, um, I, I can post about it too. Yeah. Sandra said, what if all of us who agree could set the intention of support? Who can we write to? <laughs> Sandra, thank yeah. you for that offer. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate, appreciate that. 
Um, and Katie says, please post about it. So um, I want to just pause for a moment. I, you know, I have had the pleasure of having a coach. Um, it wasn't you, although that would be super fun, wouldn't it be, Andrea? But um, I'm curious about this journey of those of us who might be on the call who would want to become a gentle warrior. Is that something that you can do alone or what kind of support do you recommend? You know, what kind of support might people want to seek out? What would they look for if they wanted to hire a coach on this journey? Such a great question. And I think it's important to understand the difference between a coach and a therapist and a consultant. And coaches really are, are you know, there's all different kinds of coaches that work, you know, the corporate level and personal coaches. But a coach really is, if you want to get clear about what's most important and you want to get from where you are to where you want to be, you hire a coach. And oftentimes in the corporate world, you know, people want to um, maybe get clear about, you know, why I'm having a hard time with this group and I want to do this better or do that better. Um, I think coaching, and I still have a coach. I, all coaches have coaches. I have always had a coach that I work with because it helps me be honest with myself. It helps me to go for goals. Coaches help you to, um, <laughs> to take up more space, set goals, achieve them, see your inner magnificence. I think that a lot of us don't allow ourselves to see our inner magnificence. I still struggle with that, with, um, with my reverence, having reverence for my gifts and talents. Um, my, the woman that wrote my, um, my forward, Tanya Geisler is my coach now. And she, uh, she really has made me stand in that. And I, and it's encouraged me to really help my clients to stand in that. We all need to see our radiant light and that's what a coach can help you do. And get you where you want to go. The most important thing I want to say about having a coach is it's a finite period of time. I mean, you work with a coach for six months, maybe nine months, that's all it is. And you get, they get you where you want to go. And so, and they help you to see yourself in a new way, uh, maybe a way that you hadn't seen yourself before. And that's, it's, it's the best job in the whole wide world, I think. I love that. Well, so as we come to the end of our hour together, I want to just make sure that people know about how to uh, find out more about you and your book and your work, Andrea. So I'm going to share my slides okay. for a moment. And then I know you have some really special closing activities for I us. Do. So just give me a quick second. Um, or, and we'll take a look together. So we want to thank you for investing this time with us today. We would encourage you to pre-order a copy of Name, Claim, and Reframe for yourself or for a friend or for all your friends. Um, if you're willing to share this book, this event, what you're learning on social media, we'd love to have you support um, this on social media. Um, we're going to give you in the chat some ways to stay in touch with Andrea by joining her email list. We also have another event on the day that the book launches. I believe we're going to have a virtual launch celebration. We'd love to have you join us again for that. In that event, we will be face to face. You can ask your questions out loud or congratulate Andrea face to face. We'd love to have you join us. And we're so grateful for you investing your time with us. And if you enjoyed this event, um, as I mentioned, we do have a webinar series and I hope you'll choose to stay in touch with me and join other future events as well. Um, and so Andrea, tell us what you have for us as we close today. So I wanted to leave, this is my gift. I can't, I have to always give someone you a gift. So my prompt for you is what treasures live under your armor? This is where the truth comes in. And Becky, let's have that prompt. Okay. So um, uh, next prompt. I uh, got it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm inviting you over the next few weeks to name the fears, the limiting beliefs that your reactions might be protecting what's going on. And why are you feeling that way? Because you always have the ch choice to choose again. <laughs> and the, the honest, why is that bothering me? And then the final action item. And finally, let's bring it above the line. What above the line thinking do you hope to call forth in the future? Now, what, what parts of yourself do you want to highlight? 
and show off and dance in more often. I hope that you'll, you'll have fun just thinking about this and dancing with it as you go throughout the rest of your week and day. And thank you so much for all being here today.